Hello everybody and welcome to the recording of the masterclass that we ran this week a couple of days ago. It was amazing. It was the most attended masterclass we have had this year and everybody really, really loved it. So we want to share the recording to those that couldn't attend or those that want to watch it again or anyone that just wants access to this amazing information. We had a little technical glitch. So um, Caitlin and I are re-recording it for you. So I hope you enjoy. Please stick around. It um, should go for about 45 minutes. And at the very end, I'm going to tell you how you can get access to a bunch of amazing copy and images specifically designed for the hair, beauty and barber industry for free. So please stick around. We're going to deliver loads of value up until that point and then we'd love to give you an extra gift of some free content that you can use um, once you know all of the new strategies that we're about to teach you. So first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Jo. Um, I'm a co-founder at Shortcuts. I was a hairdresser by trade and a salon owner, so I know exactly what it's like to be on the floor and in the cold face, like you guys are every single day. Um, I've become a bit of a marketer at heart. I absolutely love marketing and I love trying to connect clients with salons and, you know, people searching the web with salons. So I really adore digital channels and uh, it's a big passion of mine to help salons with their marketing, hence why we put together this masterclass. I'm a little bit OCD and crazy. I drive everyone crazy with my OCD-ness, <laughs> um, but I do love to combine structure and a system to a creative process like marketing. So hopefully we can teach you some really good tips today to do that. Now, I've brought along someone very special to help <laughs> um, deliver this content um, to you today. And I will let her introduce herself in a second, but her name is Caitlin. She works in our marketing team at Shortcuts. She's an incredible copywriter and marketer, and she's taught me a lot. <laughs> and so I brought her into this masterclass today to deliver that part of the content. So I'll let Caitlin introduce herself and and then we will get on with the content. Oh, thanks so much for that, Joe. Hi, everyone. It's great to talk to you again. Um, as Joe mentioned, my name is Caitlin. I've been in the Shortcuts marketing team now for about five years, if you could believe. And I absolutely love working with the amazing team here at Shortcuts. Um, everyone's really wonderful. And I've learned a lot from Joe over the years, just as much. So, yeah, um, I have a creative writing and professional writing uh, degree, if you'd believe it or not. So you could definitely call me a bit of a word nerd when it comes to copywriting and all things professional marketing copy. Um, but I really am a marketer through and through. Like I absolutely melt over really fun, engaging copy and content that brings a really solid strategy to life as well. It's something that I absolutely thrive on. Um, I definitely say that creativity is my strength and coffee is a bit of a weakness of mine. But yeah, let's get stuck in today's content, shall we, Jo? Awesome. I can't say the same about coffee. I don't drink coffee. I've never actually ever had a cup of coffee. I'm a tea drinker. <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows that. Tea by day, champagne by night. All right, mm -hmm. let me share my screen and let's get started. All righty, hopefully you can see that. Might turn the video off while we're uh, presenting the slides and then we will jump back on um, when it's question uh, time. We've got some questions from the live recording that we want to re-answer because I think that um, you may have the same questions as well. All righty, hopefully you can see my screen there and we are presenting now. All right, so this masterclass is called How to Stand Out in the Crowd. And so when Caitlin and I were putting together the content um, and deciding what to teach you in this masterclass, because there's so much to learn, we really wanted to focus on that is, you know, we all know that social channels and email inboxes and the web itself is just absolutely cluttered with so much information, so many visuals. And so we really wanted to help you guys as salon owners stand out amongst that crowded space. So that's the, the topic for today. So we're going to cover three um, distinct sections, I guess, or areas within the masterclass. The first one is copywriting, and Caitlin is going to walk you through all of that. So how to write persuasive and engaging copy that have your clients really resonating with you and um, understanding the messages that you're trying to get across. So there's lots and lots of tips and tricks in there. So feel free to take screenshots um, along the way because they are actually easy things that we know you will actually be able to implement. You don't need to be a super qualified copywriter or marketer like Caitlin. 
um, then I'm going to run you through how to make sure that your branding and your visualisation, so the imagery that goes along with the copywriting in your marketing, um, really breaks through uh, and stops people in their scroll. Um, so we've got some tips around how to take images and what sort of images to use for that. And then the last part of the masterclass is how to combine those things together, particularly when you're short on time. And like I said earlier, we're going to provide you access to a platform where you can get a whole bunch of copy and a whole bunch of images for absolutely for free um, on us as a gift from us to say thank you for attending and watching this masterclass. Alrighty, so I will hand over to Caitlin now. Thanks so much, Joe. Um, alrighty, everyone, let's get stuck in today's uh, first section of our webinar, copywriting. So whenever I use the term copywriting, everyone always stops me and asks, okay, but what the heck is that? Um, put simply, it's just a fancy term for writing really punchy words with a goal. So copywriting is all about crafting really compelling words, aka copy, for marketing and advertising that speaks to your desired client or customer and persuades them to take that all-important action. So I like to think of copywriting and all the gorgeous words that it encompasses as magic. Um, a few areas where copywriting really reigns supreme, in my opinion, is your social media, email, website, basically any written touch point that you have with your clients. And we're going to cover off a few of them today for you. So let's start with your socials. It's probably your go-to marketing channel. Um, I've got a few tips to help make your socials really sing. Um, and don't stress right now if you feel like writing isn't your strong suit yet. You don't have to be a writer to create really amazing copy that resonates with your followers. You really just have to be you. So my very first tip for um, writing copy for your socials is to write like you speak. People connect with people at the end of the day. You know, we don't connect with companies or brands as much as we do with other humans. And I find it really funny that how when we talk to other people in person, we speak quite casually, it flows quite nicely. But when we go to write it down, it gets overly formal. We try to be super professional. It comes out sounding kind of corporate-y. And I mean, that sometimes sounds a little bit boring. And that's just not you guys, right? Your clients love you and come to see you and your gorgeous team members for a reason. So be that amazing person they've already fallen in love with in your social captions. If you want to try and figure out um, how you speak, I like to think of using the chatting to your friend technique. So this technique's all about making you sound more natural, more human as you talk. Um, it's all about writing a text message to your friend. Um, it's probably very different to how you go about writing things for your salon at the moment, right? But it's all about making you sound more casual and relatable as you go. Another way to go about this is try speaking out loud and then jotting down what you said in writing. Or try speaking into a mic and writing down what you said in the recording. Of course, omitting all the ums and ahs that might come up. Um, this is a really great way to capture how you naturally speak. Your clients come to your business for a reason um, and it's likely because they love you, right? I love my hairdresser, I visit her for her and her amazing work. So be yourself, talk like yourself and extend that version of yourself to all digital touch points. My second tip here is to inject personality. I'm sure you all have wonderful, amazing, big personalities to share. So drop interesting tidbits into the caption like mentions or references to your clients' favorite TV shows, your favorite TV shows, restaurants, um, pop culture references. All of these things could be mentions of like, you know, your favorite wine, the fact you can't stop binge watching uh, reruns of The Office or the latest season of Love Island. Um, these are all things that you likely have in common with your target clients and you can relate to them on. Um, I also think telling a story. So people naturally love stories. So start writing your caption with a really irresistible hook, like you wouldn't believe what happened in the salon today. Follow it up with the middle. So insert all those juicy details of what happened. So maybe you had a fun photo shoot, um, maybe you had a training day or a farewell for a loved staff member. Get really specific about um, what happened in those moments and share those details. At the end, round it all off with a really solid ending. So you could share an insight, a feeling or an emotion that kind of summarizes your story and gives people something to walk away with and feel like they've connected with, something they can kind of remember as they go. My very last tip, and this one is actually really super important, is to get technical and focus on the technicalities in your writing because they really do matter. 
So make sure you know your theirs from your theirs and your yours from your yours. Check your spelling and punctuation because it really does matter. Depending on how you use them, it changes the meaning of a sentence and it'll make your copywriting look more polished and more professional if you get it right from the get-go. So run it through a tool. If you're not feeling super confident about um, your spelling and um, punctuation, if it's not your strong suit, there's a million tools out there. Grammarly is a really great one um, that will kind of catch up on all of those things for you. Um, the next little technicality to focus on is a thing called contractions. So contractions are basically just two words that are combined and made shorter by putting an apostrophe where letters have been removed. Contractions make your writing sound more human and less like you're a character from Bridgerton. So you can make I am snappier by using I'm instead. It's a super simple tactic to use. Lastly, I'd recommend using more verbs, so your doing words, and less adverbs, which are your describing words. And these ones are really easy to spot. They typically end in the letters L-Y, and you'll find they're really often not needed. So for example, quickly ran. If you're running, you're already likely moving pretty quickly, right? It doesn't add anything to the meaning of the sentence. So in my opinion, it can hit the road and make way for much more important words in your sentences. So let's have a look at some examples here. I've got here a pretty average caption and one that I consider to be a pretty fire caption in my opinion. Um, these are kind of written around the salon experience as well. So the first one is at Peppermint Park, we offer a range of complimentary teas and coffees at every appointment, book your app today. So this first caption is fine, but it's a little bit bland, right? Like we can definitely do better. The second, in my opinion, is much more engaging. It tells a story and it's written much more casually like someone would actually speak. So everyone knows that I'm something of a tearholic. I usually have three half drunk mugs on the go while I'm at the salon. There's something just so comforting about having a hot cuppa on hand, especially on a rainy or cold day. That's why I love having a broad range of complimentary teas and coffee on offer at your appointment so you can sit back and relax. Head to our link in bio or DM us today to secure your appointment. We can't wait to see you. So some things to note in this one are, um, let's starting with teaholic. It's a really new, fun, interesting, and kind of unexpected way to describe someone who likes tea. So it adds a bit of extra interest to the um, sentence. Also, um, three half drunk mugs is a really specific detail. It adds some uniqueness to the story and it's something you can easily picture or visualize. Like I just think of Jo when I think of this three half drunk mugs of tea. She is an avid tea drinker and always has one on the go at some point. Um, the next one to look at is hot cuppa on hand on a rainy or cold day. Again, it's a super specific detail that's emotive and your reader can really visualize and picture themselves in that experience at your salon, having a hot cup of tea. It's a very relatable feeling and it's something we all want to experience. Um, we all love the feeling of a hot cup of tea or coffee on a cold day, right? Um, there's also, I love this, so I thought you would too. So I love a broad range of complimentary, complimentary teas and coffee. Um, this shows emotion and sentiment that you're thinking of your client, as well as painting a small picture of what part of their salon experience will be like with you. And then lastly, finish off with a really strong call to action so the client knows exactly what they need to do next. You don't have to write all of your social captions with um, a call to action at the end. That doesn't have to be the intention of all of them. But if you do decide to put in a call to action, make sure it is really punchy and that your client absolutely knows what their next steps are and where to go. Excellent. So let's start looking at email then now that socials have been covered off. So everyone wants their emails opened, read, and even better clicked on. But you would know how many marketing emails you get flooded with day to day personally. So how can you cut through the clutter in your inbox and get that email you worked so hard on actually opened? I've got some copy tips to help you get uh, cut through and deliver value to your readers, so your clients. You really want to deliver something that means something at the end of the day. So to get those open rates, you need a subject line that absolutely stands out and screams, pick me. So it needs to be catchy, kind of cheeky at times and captivating to grab that attention. You have to be unique here, okay? I've got some examples of this in a minute that we can look at. Other good subject lines pose a question instead of a statement. So people are really curious by nature. We want to know the answer to things and we're kind of nosy, right? So it can be super enticing for someone to click on if you ask a question in a subject line. They want to know the answer on the other side of the open. 
Um, another thing to incorporate is, or try out, I suppose, is try using different cases of your sentences. So lowercase, um, sentence case, so starting with a capital and writing like a normal sentence as these bullet points are, or writing in title case, so you capitalise the start of each letter, each word, sorry. So sentence case feels more human and natural because it is how we write naturally. Whereas title case stands out in an inbox a lot more as you've emphasised each word by capitalising each word. And so it is a good tactic to try out. Give these a go um, and see what works for your audience best. Lastly, don't forget to throw in an emoji or two. I'm sure you guys are all over this already, but the colours really stand out. And depending on what emoji you use, it could get your message across before they even read the subject. And it will also reinforce the message of your, of your subject line as well. So once your client has clicked through, you've achieved your first goal, the next goal is to get your message across and drive them through to that click through button. So in your body text, uh, my tip is to keep it short and snappy to get your message across quickly. Everyone's super time poor, right? No one wants to read a novel over email. So stick to just one message, maybe two, if you can. Um, you can always send more follow-up emails down the track with more messages if you need to. So start with the super punchy sentence that leads into your message. So if we're looking at a time to see you again campaign, you could start with something like, we haven't seen you in three months. Follow it up with, it's time to see you again. And finally, a sentence to lead them through to that click through button. So book your next appointment today and get a complimentary treatment. Um, and then last but definitely not least is all about irresistible call to actions or CTAs as we like to shorten it to sometimes. Your call to action that you use absolutely matters. It's so important. It needs to be clear, concise and directive while also being irresistible. So use really punchy words like book, call, see, click. So it's super clear what your recipient has to do next. So let's have a look at some do's and don'ts of some pick me subject lines. I've got a few examples here. So some examples of the don'ts is book an appointment with us. This one, like it's fine, but it's not very unique and it's kind of bland. We can absolutely do better. The next is sale, sale, sale. Um, so words like sale, free, open, funnily enough, as tempting as they are to use, they often get blocked by spam filters because they're commonly associated with really spammy emails. Um, so try and avoid using subject lines, particularly in this manner where it's repeated, it's caps, it just generally looks a little bit spammy. So we can get a little bit more creative here. The last one is open this email to book your next appointment with Peppermint Park Salon. This one, honestly, it's just too long. We like to try and keep to, I think about a max of 41 characters that include spaces. So try to keep it um, in that uh, word length or character length. This one is just too long to fit that. Some better examples are, we're ready to see you again, Joe, with a cute little heart emoji on the end. This makes it super clear what the purpose of the email is. Um, it's personal because it's used Joe's name um, and that little emoji draws the eye to reinforce the message. The next one here, seven tips to banish dry skin. For some reason, people, we as people, we just really love numbers. Our eyes are drawn to them and they're not commonly used in an email inbox. So they do stand out a little bit. Um, and we wanna know what that list actually entails when you use the thing like seven tips. The next is banish dry skin. That's a problem that your um, is a common pain point for your clients, right? It's something they probably want to know the answer to. And it's a problem that you're going to solve for them. This subject line makes it really clear that you're going to do that for them. And then last, um, this one is actually one that Jo has used in some of her other projects and found really great success in. So quick question, all in lowercase. This one is best sent from... Uh, like not your company, it's better sent from like a person. So a name, so from Joe Burgess, that kind of thing. It looks a lot more personal um, and it's more likely to uh, get opened by someone. We're more likely to open an email that comes from another person. Um, so the follow-up to, uh, uh, to a subject line like this could be, how do you rate your experience with us? Are you happy with your home hair care? That could be the body content that they find on the other side of this subject line. Um, so now let's look at some examples of some really irresistible call to actions, some don'ts and some do's. So a couple examples of don'ts are click here to view all available, all available appointments. This one put simply is just way too long. For call to actions, we want to keep them short and snappy to just one or two words. Two is kind of the best um, to really get across um, your meaning. 
The next is our appointment. So this one, there's no direction as part of it. Our appointment's what? Do you want me to book an appointment? Do you want to view your appointments or see what's available? It just doesn't really um, have that direction that is really important in a solid call to action. And then last, again, view. View what? So um, stronger words to use if you're going to choose a singular word is book. But ideally, it's always better um, followed up the further direction of like book now or book here. So you'll see that in some better examples down here in the do. So view appointments, book now, click to book, book appointment. All of these are really short, snappy, direct, and it tells them exactly what to do and what they'll see on the other end. So they're much stronger call to actions to use at the end of the day. Amazing. So last but very not least, let's chat about your online presence, aka your website. Your website is your digital shop front, so it needs to look as gorgeous as you and also make visitors feel like they've come to the right place the moment that they land there. Your copy needs to be on point and make them feel that way. So my tips for, um, my copy tips for your online presence are as soon as your target client lands on your website, you want to make them feel like they've found what they're looking for and come to the right place, like they've come home or something. From the get-go, you should tell them who you are, what transformation you'll offer them, and how your offer will help solve their problem. At the end of the day, your clients care about themselves and how you'll help them. That's all they really want at the end of the day is for you to solve their problem. Keep any copy you have on your website super simple and bite-sized. You want to create as little work as possible for the viewer to figure out that they're actually in the right place for them. So the way to make them feel like they've come to the right place is create sales driving landing pages, aka for booking appointments or buying products um, through your online store. Sales driving landing pages can equally be your homepage um, or other landing pages that you've designed for campaigns or specific audiences um, like coming from an Instagram ad, for instance. So to create these sales driving landing pages, use this framework. So you should have a sentence that answers every one of these statements. So these statements are, here's what I have to offer, here's how it will solve your problem, and here's what you need to do next. So for that last sentence, it's super important to find a way um, to get clients to take that action that you wanted, so i.e. booking an appointment, right? So how you do this is um, use this kind of framework. You need to create urgency, so you make them feel like they need it now and not later. You need to create scarcity, so make them think it will only last for a limited time to really get them, give them that sense of FOMO. Um, and put a time limit on any offers. So book by the end of this month to receive X or only two appointments left for this Saturday left with Ali, book in now. And then last but definitely not least, you need to back everything up with social proof. So your clients and we as people, you probably know this in your own buying behavior, but we trust the words of other clients and other customers more than the brand that we're actually buying from. Like we want to know what their experience was and kind of relate it and hope that we would have a similar experience if it's positive, right? So back everything that you say up about yourself with testimonials from your gorgeous clients confirming all of these things. So let's look at an example of helping make your clients feel like they've come to the right place. So use this framework to make them feel like they've um, really found the right salon for them. At the end of the day, this is your value proposition to your guest. So the framework is product slash service helps target segment, result they desire most, job, uh, the job done without the things that they fear most. So our example for this is Joe's salon helps women on the go like you stop for a moment and relax while getting the haircut and color of their dreams without taking up all of their time. So the best way to go about getting this kind of value proposition um, and learning these things about yourself, because some of the things that you think you deliver really well to your clients, your clients may agree with, but they also might have extras that you wouldn't have thought of yourself. So the best way to find out their true answers and discover your value that you would offer to prospective clients is to survey your existing client base. And some of these questions that you can ask to really draw out these really juicy answers from them uh, what was happening in your life that made you decide to come and visit us? Um, what was your first impressions of us? Did you experience any unexpected surprise? And this one will really give you an answer that you may not have thought of yourself. How would you feel if you could never visit us again? And when it comes to your hair or visiting a hairdresser or a beauty salon, what frustrates you the most? So 
these, all of these questions are going to give you some really good answers that you're going to be able to pick out patterns in uh, some common threads and some common words that you will be able to repurpose and use in constructing this value proposition. Um, so the next that we're going to look at is creating sales driving landing pages. So looking back at that framework that I mentioned two slides ago, the framework is here's what I have, here's how it will solve your problem, and here's what you need to do next. So for here's what I have, the example is a relaxing salon experience away from the hustle and bustle, coffee or tea on arrival, plus a gorgeous new cut and color, we've got you girl. That's the here's what I have part. For how it will solve your problem, at Joe's Cellar, we will help you banish roots, say bye to dead ends, and bring your colour to life so you leave the salon feeling a million bucks and have your best gal pals gushing over your fresh do. That's how you'll solve their problem. You'll get rid of their roots, say bye to their dead ends, and leave them feeling amazing so that they are acknowledged by their um, loved ones, I suppose. And then here's what you need to do next. Love the sound of all of that? Hit that booking button and lock in your appointment today. That's the call to action that you end on. And last but definitely not least, this is probably my most important tip of today, but editing is absolutely everything. It will take your copy from just good to drop dead gorgeous and amazing in no time flat. So the way you go about doing an edit of any copy that you write, this is your social captions, your emails, your website copy, anything. The very first thing you're going to do is write a draft. And so in this draft, all you're doing is putting ideas down on the paper. So you're striving for progress and ideas, not perfection. The next pass that you go through is where you reread and rewrite. So in this reread, you're going to ask yourself if your ideal client would read this end to end um, and if they would answer, if it would answer their question or solve their problem or deliver value to them. In the third pass through is where you're going to start injecting those really meaningful details and that personality of yours, right? So these could be anecdotes, um, specific details that add more substance and visual visualization, sorry, to your story. Um, that really help your reader picture exactly what you're telling. Um, and you're going to swap over your adverbs for verbs. So remember that remembering that example of quickly ran to just ran. Um, the next step, and it's a super important one, but you're going to cut. And in this cut, you are going to be absolutely ruthless. You're going to get rid of adverbs. Um, you're going to get rid of any fluffy filler words, any double ups that say the same thing. This is actually something that I see a lot when people go to write copy is they'll write one sentence, follow it up with the second sentence. And in that second sentence, they basically repeat that um, former sentence just using different words. And it, so they're saying the same thing in a different way, back to back, I suppose. That second sentence, you can just cut it. It doesn't add anything to your copy. Um, it's gonna make your copy a lot more polished if you remove that second sentence. And lastly, you're going to read your work aloud. So I know it's a little bit of a daunting thing, but reading your work aloud really will kind of help you realize if it's written like you would speak and sounds like you would speak. You could even read it out to a friend if you're feeling brave. I'm sure they'd be more than honest with you. Um, and if it does kind of, kind of come across and sound exactly like you speak, then I think that's amazing. You've nailed it. Amazing. That's all for the copywriting section today. So I'll hand back over to Joe. Awesome. Oh my gosh, that was just so amazing. It's the second time I've seen you present that information and I even got more tips out of it the next time. So thank you so much, Caitlin. I hope um, everybody watching picked up a few little tips that you can actually, um, you know, start to use and implement in your business today so that your copywriting can really resonate with your followers and your clients. Um, and, you know, we are in our industry generally really good um, verbal communicators. We're really good at speaking and getting a message across really clearly and relating to all different types of people. But when it comes to turning that into words on a piece of paper or on a screen, it's difficult. But some of those tips that you've learned today will definitely help you do that. Alrighty, so now we're going to move into the visual side of things. So I always say like, you know, words and images are like peas and carrots. They kind of go together and you, um, you know, you, you can have great copy, but if the visual lands flat, then, you know, you may not read the copy and vice versa. So the imagery that goes along with the words in your social media, in your emails and on your website is really, really important. So that's what I'm going to cover off um, now. So 
Let's take a look. So the main tips, I've got three main tips for you around your visual branding on your social media feed. And let's face it, this is the place that is so, so crowded. Um, you know, we're bombarded with images and videos 24 seven on our social media platforms. So we really need something to stop that scroll and make us read the amazing copy that you're now gonna write attached to those images. So the first tip is to be different. Don't use the same stock images that you see everywhere online. People just glaze over those types of things. You need to have original and different images that will really stand out in your followers' feeds. So think about how what you could do or what would be visually disruptive to one of your clients as they're scrolling through their feed. Um, the second one and similar, it's also about being different, is to be emotive. So what we mean by that is to bring out the emotion or the experience that's actually happening in your business so that the reader or the follower can you know, get us, you know, put themselves in that picture, so to speak. So if you look at that picture on the screen there, it's a really tight image. It shows a lot of action. So, you know, there's pressure from the hands, there's water that we think would be nice and warm. Um, you know, you can see by the, her facial expressions that that client is super relaxed. Now, it's not a big wide shot. We can't see the whole salon. We can't see the hustle bustle of what's going on. We've really narrowed down the emotions of this image to just what's happening between the stylist and this guest in this moment. And images like this really resonate. They stand out. They're different. It's not just a person's face with a beautiful balayage, um, you know, that you see over and over again when you're looking at salon imagery. So think about what sort of images you could take in your salon that would be really tight and emotive in this way that show in action um, the experiences that are happening in your salon. And they don't have to be, they don't have to be identifiable. We can't see who the hairdresser is here and we really can't even see the client in this image. Um, but they will help uh, invoke a feeling of what it's like to visit your salon and make them want to come. Um, and also be exciting. So there's, you know, you do amazing work in your salons and in your um, in your beauty salons as well. But those before and after shots, so you know, an eyebrow shot before and after, or a belly eye shot before and after, or a men's haircut before and after, or a beard before and after. We've seen those shots a million times. And although it's an important part of your social media strategy, it shouldn't be all of your shots. You need to cycle through a variety of images that not only show your work, but also highlight the salon experience, um, information about you and your team, educating your clients, making them laugh, making them feel something. So have a think about a few different, a variety of different styles of images that you could use on your social media grid um, that would provide that variety and, and to be exciting. So always try and share content that's relatable and motivating without trying to sell services and products all the time. You know, the old saying of a picture paints a thousand words, it really does. Um, so think about how you can tell a story with your picture and then combine it with your copywriting. But the main tip is variety, um, emotion. So trying to get across that experience and just be different. Just try and be different from everybody else. Certainly everybody else that's in your followers feeds. All right, so here's a few examples of how you can be different. So all of these images here are really unique. They're specifically targeted to hair, beauty and barber. So we can tell that we know where it's come from, but they would be um, visually disruptive. So this hand on the left holding, you know, the nail polishes with the flowers, that is a really beautiful, bright image that's going to look completely different to most other images in a social media feed. Same with the hairspray there with the little um, uh, Scrabble letters coming out of it. Um, you know, the action that's happening in a tight shot of that colour on the stone. Flat lay shots, you know, the bottom one down there with the water bottle and the tulle and the silk. It's like all these different textures and colours. It's really unique. So it's going to stand out and be different to what most other people are posting on their social media feed. And more on these emotive shots. So here's some more examples um, showing really tight shots of action of the experiences that are happening in your salon. So, you know, that bottom picture there with the foils, it's really showing how fine and detailed it is 
when you're putting together a foil and you can see the beautiful nail polish there and the color being applied versus an image that's just a person sitting there with a back of a head of foils. We've all seen that a million times over. And every now and then that's great to post, but these sort of images are going to, people go, oh, what's that? And more enticing to read the caption. Um, again, use people that are in your salon, like real people. These do not have to be models. In fact, the more real they look, the more they will resonate. So, you know, obviously that lady in the left corner getting her lipstick applied, she's got beautiful lips, but they're not perfect. It's not the most perfect model in all the world. Same with the lady getting her eyes brown waxed they are really they're beautiful shots of beautiful real people having services in a salon so hopefully that makes sense to you that haircut too is another one that's showing off the skill of even just how hot how you hold the tools and what it looks like when you're having a haircut in action not just the end result so hopefully that makes sense and this is it be exciting so here we can see a bunch of different images so there's um, we've got graphical images here which resonate really well. They get great engagement. Again, as part of a variety. If you, if you do a motivational quote, you get great engagement. doesn't mean that every single post needs to look like a graphic. Um, so mix them up. We've got flat lays. We've got the emotive shots. Um, we've got shots happening in the salon. And you, amongst that, you should also incorporate your own unique images of your work, yourself, your team and your salon environment. So yeah, make it um, interesting in your feed. I know that, you know, when we look at an Instagram grid, it's really great to have some kind of pattern or style or visual um, aesthetics to it. So think about the types of graphics that you might like and the types of images and colors that you might like that would give you that beautiful grid, but also create exciting posts so that when they see an image, they don't just instantly think, oh yeah, that's another one. I've seen that before and keep on scrolling. All right, so now how do we use some of those visual, um, you know, visual concepts in our emails to improve um, getting the attention and action from our um, email database? So the very first thing, as Caitlin mentioned, is the subject line. If we don't have an incredible subject line, they're not even going to click through and read to see a gorgeous image. But the next most important thing is the imagery inside the email. Does it grab the attention? Is it bold? Is it on brand? Does it um, spark curiosity? Does it tell a little bit of story to make entice the reader to want to read further about what the email is about? Um, and does it reinforce the message? So if you're talking about, you know, having a salon experience, have an image that shows a salon experience. If you're talking about products, have an image that has products in it. If you're talking about, you know, a Mother's Day special, have an image that relates to that particular message. Don't just use the same salon branding banner on the top of all your emails. You'll be better off with no images than to do that because people, once they've read one, they just assume that every email that looks like that is going to be the same, even if the copy is completely different. So use variety um, and make sure it resonates with the message of the email and get creative. So you can use beautiful images to create gifts, um, you know, different templates like Canva. If you haven't jumped into Canva and had a play with their templates, I definitely encourage you to do that. The slides that you're looking at today have all been created in Canva using one of their templates. And we've injected our own personality and our own imagery into these slides to make them um, reflect our brand. So. Uh, anything that's moving in an email, um, which you can use GIFs or other collage type graphics, um, will really will really help you. Be mindful of the file size though. So try to stick to around 600 by 650 pixels and no greater than one megabyte for the image so that it doesn't get stuck and so that it draws, you know, quickly on the screen when somebody does click on that irresistible subject line to read your email, the image automatically pops there. So again, use tools like Canva to take a high res image that you've taken either on your phone or that you've downloaded into cropping it into the right size to insert inside your email. These things literally do only take a couple of minutes once you've had a bit of a practice. And once you've got a few templates on the go, you can easily recreate them and keep making them look interesting, but still on brand to you. So here's some examples um, of unemotive versus emotive images. So time to see you again on the left-hand side there, very boring, not a lot of color, 
um, you know, just a shot of the salon that doesn't make me want to come and see you again versus the pictures on the right hand side where we've got hands in hair, we've got the experience happening at the basin, we've got the foam of the shampoo, like there's just so much more detail that can actually resonate to me to want to come into your salon because I haven't been in for a while. So just think about that when you think about what's the message of your email, um, what's the wording to get them to open it, and then what's the best way to visually represent um, what you're trying to say in that email. Um, and this is some examples of the types of stuff that we've all seen before versus what we might not have seen before. So on the left there, a bunch of you know, free downloadable images that you can get on the internet. If you search for hairdresser or salon or vibrant colors or balayage or massage or makeup brushes, these are the types of images you're going to see. They don't have a lot of cohesion. They don't go well together. You can look there that some of them have, um, you know, white backgrounds. Some of them have a filter over the top of them. Like they're, they're people, but they're not your people. They're not visiting your salon, they're models. They're, you know, they just don't resonate with people. People scroll past these images because they don't connect with them. On the right hand side is some examples of some imagery. I'm going to give you access to download some of these that are specifically taken for a salon. So they're beautiful professional shots, but haven't been seen everywhere. And they're going to stand out against other images in emails and in social media feeds. All right, so coming into the last part of the masterclass, thanks for sticking with us so far. We've only got a few more minutes to go and then um, we will give you access to get those free images and copy. So this is what I hear a lot. I talk to a lot of salon owners and these are the types of things. And some of these things you might be saying to yourself in your head sometimes. I can't find those unique stock images that will help me stand out. That looks great. All the things you're saying, Joe, is amazing, but where do I go find those images? When I search, there isn't a lot of variety online for what I'm looking for. Um, I never have the chance to take photos myself other than before and after hair shots. So, uh, you know, salon owners are like, great, yeah, flat lays, awesome, tight shots, awesome. But when do we get time to do that? When we're in the salon all day long doing hair, I totally get that. I don't know um, what other photos I should be looking for. So again, you know, you, what you always do, you tend to continue to do, and then therefore it becomes something that your followers glaze over. Writing isn't my strong suit, hair is. Caitlin's given you some amazing tips today, um, but it still takes a bit of time, doesn't it, to sit down and think about what are you going to write about, how are you going to write it, and then inject some of those tips to get that copy um, spot on and specifically related to our industry. And Joe, I just don't have time to think about this stuff. I hear it all the time. Or we do stuff on our social media and we just don't know if we're getting the results. We just do it because we think we have to do it and we post and now we think our posts are boring, but we just keep doing them. That is so typical. If any of those things you're saying them to yourself, you are not alone. Everybody has as an experiencing these same challenges, which is exactly why we set out to try and help you um, solve some of these, make your life easier so that you can do more of what you love, which is look after your customers and run your businesses. All right, so what if I um, could tell you that I could solve these problems for you and provide you with access to copy and images um, that would help you do all the things that we've talked about in this masterclass? That would be amazing, right? Some of these images that you've seen, in fact, all of these images that you've seen, except for the ones that we've said don't do, um, we're going to um, give you access to those so that you can use them as well. So I would like you to say hi to our newest um, member of the team, Pixelong. So Pixelong is a platform that provides you access to social media copy and images to help you stand out from the crowd. So we have got literally thousands of unique hair and beauty photos. We do photo shoots, we bring in all the props, we set up all the lighting and we take gorgeous shots that are um, varied and exciting and all designed to help you in your business to fill in the gaps of the things that you don't have time to produce yourself. Um, same with when you're lost for words and you um, can't think of what to write. You might have a beautiful image, but you just don't know what to write. There's a bunch of captions that have been written by professional copywriters um, using all the proper techniques to help 
engage your social audience, promote your services and share your story. So we provide captions inside the platform across a variety of different content pillars. So there are some promotional captions, there are some hair, there are some beauty, uh, there are some introduce the team, there are some personal insights, um, there are some motivational quotes. So a huge variety um, that you can pick from. And they're all tagged to the hilt so that you can find exactly what you're looking for when you're looking for it. So whether you're looking for one single image for an email or to go onto a, a website or a landing page or some inspiration for your social media or an entire month's worth of social media strategy, Pixelon can help you out. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a second. So um, here's a few ways that you can use um, and our existing members absolutely love Pixelon. So searching for the content using the search bar across the top. So you can just browse for an image of a blow dryer if you're looking for that or a facial or um, a lifestyle shot if, or a puppy, you know, anything you might be looking for. You can download the images and captions on demand um, or as part of a membership plan. So if you just want one image, you can just download one, or if you join up to one of our membership plans, you get access to everything you can download, um, you know, multiple up to 30 downloads a month. Um, and we also create a monthly inspo page every single month towards the end of the month. It's around about the 25th of the month for the next month um, so that you can plan your entire social media strategy in advance. And we've got lots of members that do that. You might like to do it for a month or you might like to do it once a week or you might like to do it daily. So it's completely up to you. And we are constantly adding new content to Pixelon all the time. So you are not going to see these images all over the internet. All right, so let's take a quick look around. I've got my screen up here. So Pixelon is just pixelon.com. So if you come to the website here, you will see um, that a search bar up the top so you can just type in something that you might be looking for and start searching and it will search across all of the content. So the categories we have are photos, um, captions, graphics and resources. The resources are amazing and they're going to teach you more of the types of things that you've learned in this masterclass today. So on the homepage here are our new images that are being updated and you will see new stuff popping in there all the time. As you can see, these are beautiful images designed to stand out in your feed and they're specifically designed for the hair, beauty and barber images. We have a bunch of collections. So if you're looking for maybe a flat lay image, um, you can click on the flat lace collection and you can scroll through a variety of flat lace there. Like this image here with this, um, Clippers is really going to stand out. Look at the colours in that. Um, it's going to be great. So all of these images, you're not going to see them anywhere else. They are exclusively created by us for Pixelon members. We've also, we talked about graphics. You can create these in Canva yourself um, or you can take, um, you know, get access to the ones that we've created for you. So these are designed by a professional graphic artist um, and the copywriting is all being created by our copywriters. And you can come in here and find some amazing um, motivational graphics. So all sorts of things um, in here. So super cool. And as I said before, captions. So you can download captions in bundles and they come in a bundle of seven. So basically every single caption is um, seven captions in one. So you get a whole week's worth. So you download, um, when you download a caption bundle, you'll download a Word document, which will look like this. And you have professionally written captions that do all of those amazing things that Caitlin taught you before. And you can simply copy and paste these straight into your social media channels or into your planning tools if you use a planning tool. Um, they're designed to be what we call fill in the gap. So we make suggestions um, about what you might want to insert into the caption to make it your own. So they are professionally written, but you can change them, obviously. So you can use them as inspiration, take them as they are, um, and uh, you'll find that you'll have a variety of different types of captions. So they're not all promotional, they're not all meet the team, but a total variety. And you'll see that for each of these captions, we offer a suggested image that you can download. So you can click on that link and download that image directly from Pixelon. You might also like to click on that link and then use the tags associated um, with that image to find something else. Or 
you might want to use your own image as well. So I think you'll find the caption uh, download, the caption bundle downloads super helpful for um, generating inspiration and ideas and posts for your social media. All right, so I think you're going to find these caption bundle downloads super, super helpful for you when you're putting together your social media strategy for the week or even the entire month. In fact, if you are someone who's looking for inspiration for an entire month, we've totally got you sorted. When you sign up to the pro plan, which is the top monthly plan, and I'm going to give you a code to get access to that for a super amazing price and a free month's trial, you will get this monthly inspo page. You'll see this monthly inspo link at the top along the menu bar there once you've logged in and created a pro plan membership. Now, scroll, once you scroll down here, you will see a video which I definitely recommend you watch. It just goes into more detail around how to use the entire Pixel On platform, including this monthly inspo page. So here we curate for you every month towards the end of the month in preparation for the next month, a bunch of images and captions that have been paired together to use as a social media post. You can just download the image if you want to, or you can just uh, copy the caption if you want to, or you can use both. It is completely up to you. So whether you're on your desktop or your mobile phone, you just click copy and it will copy the caption or you click download and it will download the image. And if you're on your phone, it will allow you to save it to your camera roll. So this is a super easy way for you just to sort your socials for the entire month. And you're able then to interject your own images that you take um, within the salon. So we've got hair captions and images, we've got beauty captions and images, we've got lifestyle because it's important to add variety and we've got those beautiful graphics. And this monthly inspo page is refreshed every single month and we will send you an email when that happens so that you know and you can jump on in and download all of this copy. So I hope that you love this platform and I would love to invite you to try it for free. So I'll just pop back to the slides and we are almost finished. Thank you for sticking with us so far. All right, so we've had a look around pixelon.com. We're going to send you an email if we haven't already um, with the URL and the unique code to access this for free. So normally the pro plan is 42 US dollars a month. And what you get for that is 30 downloads. So that's 30 images or 30 caption bundles, which of each of those contains seven captions or a combination that suits you. But because you're so amazing and you've uh, watched this webinar all the way to the end, we'd like to offer you a code to access for only $35 a month. And the first month is totally free. So you can jump in and download a bunch of stuff and try it out and see how you like it. So you just need to use the code 35PROMO. And this code expires on Friday, the 1st of July at 5 p.m. So don't wait too long to jump in there and sign up because I wanna make sure you get access to all of those cool freebies. Alrighty, so that wraps up the masterclass for today. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, we had a bunch of questions that we thought would be great to answer um, for you quickly at the end of this masterclass. So uh, we'll pop back onto our cameras and Caitlin's got a couple of questions there that we can go through. All right, so <laughs> hit us up with some questions. That was awesome, Joe. Yeah, so we had some really great questions come through from the webinar the other day. And we had a couple here that we wanted to reshare with you because we thought they were really quality questions. Um, and we had some good answers for them as well, I think that would be really helpful. So the first was from um, Brooke, and she said that she found there's a really, um, it's hard to find the right line. It's a really fine line um, between uh, being a cool casual and also being professional in your writing and how you try and communicate with your clients um, and I thought that was an amazing question because that is so true trying to find your true brand voice that feels like you but still feels super professional without being that corporate and stuffy kind of vibe um, and to that I answer or would suggest you guys know your clients better than anyone. You know them better than we do. Um, you have those one-on-one -on -one and personal relationships with them. So 
when you have your clients in your chair or on your table in your beauty room, think about those conversations that you are having with them, whether it be a brand new client or one that you've been seeing for 15 years. Think about those conversations that you're having and start picking out different topics, different words that you use as you converse with them um, and how you like to communicate with them. And paying close attention to how you communicate with them is really going to help inform um, the kind of copy that you start to write as well. Thinking back to that, write like you speak, right? So I think that's probably how you can then start to find that balance between being a little bit casual, but still maintaining that level of professionality, as I'm sure you all do in the salon. I love that. Yeah. And just, yeah, take note of the things that resonate with your customers when you're having those conversations. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next question was um, about, do you think personal videos from staff are more effective um, than just regular copied images? So basically, is video better than just imagery now on Instagram and Facebook? Totally, and you'll probably be able to answer this better than me, but yes, we know that video is engaging and particularly on Instagram, it's become very much a video platform. But the cool thing is you can, anything that's moving is a video. So you can create a video out of a bunch of images and you can put motivational quotes and words and you can actually create things in Canva or even just directly in Reels that can become a video. So I'd say, yes, you need videos in the salon for sure, but you can also create other interesting content and visual based videos as well. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I will just add as well that absolutely like Instagram is moving towards, they've said that they're moving towards being a video first kind of platform. And you've probably noticed that yourselves in your own feed, that you're starting to see a lot more reels, a lot more video content crop up. Um, but in saying that, like your static imagery is still just as important um, because video is really hard. It, it can be quite hard to make, like as Joe just said, like there's ways around it, but it is like another level of um, time consuming. But you also have other content that is still super beautiful. Like you've got those beautiful before and afters that you do want to share and those gorgeous flat lays, as we mentioned. Um, so there's still definitely a time and a place for all those sorts of um, bits of content that can be still really compelling on Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. Great question. Cool. Um, the next one was, um, how do you know what is going to engage with clients? That was from Lindley. Yeah, cool. Um, looking at your insights is the best way. So going back and looking at the last week, month, year, however long it's been, go into the insights inside your platform. So whether that be Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, any of those platforms where you are regularly posting and see which ones got the most engagement. So the most likes, the most comments, the most shares, the most views on your stories and look for um, the trends in those things and what are your audience really looking for. And again, it doesn't mean create everything like that because we still need variety, but I think it's really important to go back and look at your insights and see, oh, they really resonated with those graphical quotes or they really love the tight emotive shots or they really love it when I put my face to camera or my team put their face to camera. We seem to get more engagement with that. So that's how I'd answer that one. Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed that, Joe. Cool. Oh, that's all our questions for today. All right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Caitlin, for all of your amazing insights. Oh, um, thank thank you. you for watching, everybody. And, you know, please feel free to jump in, use that promo code before next Friday and tell us what you think. We would love to hear. Um, anyway, we look forward to helping you more inside the membership. So thank you very much and bye from us for now. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.